Hey guys, in today's video I'd like to show you the optic that I chose and kind of the mount and accessories for that optic um, to go on my AR-15 pistol build. So here we have the Hollow Sun HS-503GU and it has a uh, selectable reticle so you can do just the two MOA dot or you can do the kind of like EOTech style reticle with the two MOA dot and the 65 MOA circle. And uh, the main reason I chose this optic was um, it was the closest to like an Aimpoint T2 style um, optic um, for a fraction of the price. So this was um, $199.99 and I got it from a seller on eBay. Um, you can't really find this model uh, in stock anywhere but uh, there were several on eBay so if you are interested in this site in particular. Um, go ahead and give it a search on eBay and you should be able to find it. But uh, we'll Go ahead and uh, unbox this here in a moment. I'll show you the other um, accessories that I'll be using with it. So we've got the Tango Down IO cover. And this is for an Aimpoint uh, T2 or H2. But I believe this is a similar enough shape that this will fit um, just fine. So little uh, protective cover for the sight and it's um, in tan so uh, it'll look a little bit cooler on the pistol. And then here we have a Geisley Automatics Super Precision T1 mount with a one-third co-witness. And that'll be the mount that I use again because it's in like a tan color uh, versus the mount that the Holosun comes with. All right, so let's get into the optic itself. Just have a little sleeve over the plastic shell. You can see the Hall Sun logo there. Here's the uh, instruction booklet, which has a typo on it, which is kind of funny. HS503GU Mirko site instead of micro site, I imagine is what it was supposed to say. Lens cleaning thing. All right, here is the optic itself. It includes the low mount, and it comes mounted with the, uh, I believe it's the one-third co-witness mount. And it comes with a battery. The battery is an energizer, which is actually kind of surprising. I figured it would come with like a no-name or off-brand uh, battery, but includes uh, that. And then let's Dig this thing out of here. So here is the sight. Kind of has like the aim point style, uh, like T1 bikini rubber lens cover. Which uh, the reason I went with the Tango Down is I really don't like the design of these. Like you can lose them and they're kind of just cheap and flimsy feeling to me uh, whereas with like the tango down covers it actually protects the body as well as providing uh, tethered lens caps for the sight so all right uh, let's get the battery in and uh, turn it on I suppose So, kind of have like the, it's not like a rotary switch, but it, 
the same location that the battery would be on an aim point. And a lot of uh, Holosun's current models have like a battery tray, which I'm not really sure how that works. But I have read that it increases like the stack height of the site so that even with like a one-third co-witness mount, your uh, site is actually sitting higher than one-third co-witness. So that's why I went with this model as well is because it matches, I think, the height of an endpoint T1 or T2. So Let's see if we can turn this on. There we go. So that's max brightness there. Looks like it gets a little bit of glare that you can see on the camera. From the angle, I believe. But there you can see it on. And uh, this also has like the shake awake technology, so you can set the timer for it to auto off, and then anytime the site detects movements, it'll come on. And that's to uh, prolong battery life. And uh, you can uh, change the time, I believe, on it. I think there's one for after 15 minutes of activity, it'll turn off, and then you can switch it to like an hour. Um, and then maybe I think there's one more setting for like three hours, perhaps. But I'll mess around with that a little, in a little bit. So that is the dot with the circle. And then if you can just hold down the minus button for three seconds. And it'll, it'll turn off the circle and go to just the standard dot. So there's the dot. And it does have the angled lens you can see there. Which I think is supposed to reduce glare um, in the optic. And uh, yeah, let's uh, take this mount off and then I have a replica Aimpoint T2 here that I'll show the uh, dimensions kind of compare the size and shape of this Holosun 503GU versus what an Aimpoint T2 would look like. So here is a replica Aimpoint T2 without a mount next to the Hollow Sun 503GU. Put them side by side there. So as you can see, very similar shape. Even the top section with the uh, kind of like shroud around the um, turrets. And then it looks like the mounting pattern is the same, so I shouldn't have any issues uh, mounting the Halvison on the uh, Geisley mount. And then, let's see, turn that off for now. You can kind of see um, this replica Aimpoint T2 has kind of like a blue tint to it, whereas this one uh, doesn't really seem to have much of a tint to it at all, actually, which is pretty nice. So you can see it's kind of bluish. So 
so yeah, it looks, looks really nice. Uh, happy with it so far. Um, I won't bore you with uh, mounting this, but I'm going to get the uh, Geisley mount installed as well as the Tango Down cover. And then uh, kind of add it to this video, so stay tuned. We have the finished product. This is the Holosun HS503GU mounted on a Geisley Automatics Super Precision Mount for T1, T2. It's uh, bolted on just fine, no issues with that, and uh, looks really good. It's got a really nice color to it. And as you can see, the Tango Down IO cover. Uh, de designed for the T2. It uh, doesn't fit super well on the Hollow Sun. Um, if I really wanted to, I could kind of dremel this out a little bit. This is really the only area that doesn't fit super well, and that's because it has kind of those raised barriers for the um, turret cover. Um, but other than that, it fits just fine. No issues with it. And then um, I could also Dremel out the top here so that I have access to the buttons, but you can still um, push them through the cover. So I may just leave it alone. Um, it's not a huge deal because it's just that uh, front button and then half of the rear button. But uh, the covers fit just fine. Kind of. Get them to come apart here. So there's the covers. Fit just fine. Protects the site in the way it's designed to. And uh, they flip off just fine and stow together. So yeah, really happy with the setup and uh, excited to get it on the pistol and zeroed in. Thanks for watching.